By 1980, Ford Motor Company had entered a period of major transition. Following the termination of Lee Iacocca, who had become CEO of Chrysler, Chairman Henry Ford II had retired and Ford's chief stylist, Eugene Bordinat, stepped down as well. During the late 1970s, there had been a push by carmakers around the world to make small, fuel-efficient cars, initiated by the 1973 oil crisis. By the end of the decade, this led auto manufacturers around the world to rethink the old adage that bigger is better. A second energy crisis and a renewed recession followed in 1979. Ford studied a two-seater commuter car called the Super Nat. It was to have a three-cylinder engine and a short 78-inch wheelbase. In addition, Ford built the Mustang RSX concept car, exploring a slightly smaller two-seat derivative of the Mustang. Although Lee Iacocca was fired from the company, the most important part of his career at Ford was the Ford Mustang. In 1964, the Mustang was developed by adapting the underpinnings and powertrain of the mainstream Ford Falcon economy car and repackaging it as a sporty Mustang. During the 1970s, the same product engineering was used in the development of the American Ford Granada, Ford Thunderbird and the entire Lincoln product line. To replace the aging Ford Pinto, the company began development of the Ford Escort in the late 1970s. The basis for developing the Escort into the EXP stemmed from Ford's market research. Ford felt that the growing number of one- and two-person households, combined with the lifestyle of the younger target audience who desired a small sporty car, led them to the conclusion that Americans wanted a lively little car that is dependable, efficient and good-looking. Conversely, if a potential customer wanted the extra room for four or five passengers, they could buy an Escort, Mustang or a Fairmont. Much like the European Grand Tourer, the EXP would be a personal vehicle for two people with a small cargo area for occasional use. As the Falcon became the Mustang and the Maverick became the Granada, Ford restyled the Escort from the belt line up and turned the rear seats into cargo space. The distinguishing feature between the vehicles would be an all-new rear hatchback and front headlights. Mercury received a similar variant of the Lynx named the LN7. The origin of the EXP name has been lost to history. With Erica being the codename for Escort, some think it stands for the Erica Project Personal, where project cars were designated X at Ford. Development took place in Ford's St. Thomas plant in Ontario, Canada, and it was this plant that produced the majority of EXPs and LN7s. The first non-concept or prototype EXP and LN7 rolled off the production line on February 16, 1981, driven by Canadian Premier William Davis. At 50 inches tall and 14 feet long, the EXP was longer, lower and sportier than the North American Escort. Performance wasn't the car's strong suit, since the EXP weighed about 200 pounds more than the typical 1980s Escort, but used the same 1.6 litre 70 horsepower engine with a standard 4-speed gearbox. The North American version of the engine was tuned more for fuel efficiency than performance, and it managed 44 miles per gallon on the highway. But this two-door sporty car wasn't sporty, with a 0-60 time over 14 seconds, and it was slower than a basic Escort. The main difference between the EXP and LN7 was the rear fascia. The EXP was a notchback with a lift-up hatch, while the LN7 used a big bubble-back backlight. The shape gave both cars a lower drag coefficient than the regular Escort, further helping its fuel economy. It cost quite a bit more than the standard Escort, but at least for that price you got a good list of options as standard. Ford tried out other body styles. They made a convertible with the help of Dynamic Conversions of Michigan, but only 28 LN7s and 8 EXPs were ever produced. Ford also tried an electric version, yet another car I missed out of my 80s EV video. Like other EVs of the time, range and speed were bad, and there was little interest. As the full 1982 model year began, Ford offered a no-cost optional revised drive for better performance, plus an automatic, and an improved 80 horsepower CVH engine was made available. But the best of the bunch was the fuel-injected 1.6-litre EXP GT, generating 88 horsepower. 
Ford expected to sell 200,000 EXPs and 70,000 LN7s in the first model year, but they sold only half of that. The LN7 sales figures were so bad that the car was discontinued in 1983 after only selling 40,000. Compared to the rest of the Lincoln Mercury model line, a two-seat compact sports coupe was relatively out of place. Ford attempted to spruce up the EXP with a TR package. It featured higher front springs, stiffer struts, a larger sway bar, and special soft Michelin TRX tyres that gave better cornering but being so soft they wore down quickly. These tyres haven't been produced since the 1990s, meaning the old stock tyres are almost impossible to drive on at any speed. Formula One team McLaren were using Ford engines in 1982 and worked with Ford to put the McLaren name on the EXP. The car got an uprated 120 horsepower engine, trim kits to add ground effects, and a sunroof supplied by joint sponsor, the American Sunroof Company. By 1984, Ford were trying hard to conquer the youth market, especially the affluent young motorists with offerings such as the Mustang SVO and Thunderbird Turbo Coupe. The Special Vehicle Operations or SVO team also created the new EXP Turbo Coupe. During the car's initial development, there was a plan for adding fuel injection and a turbocharger to increase power significantly, but there simply wasn't the time. Like the McLaren model, the EXP Turbo Coupe delivered an improved 120 horsepower and a 9 second 0-60 time. 1985 brought only a few changes. The steering wheel and gear stick were altered, plus the federally mandated third brake light was added. But the bubble back rear from the Mercury was brought in to update the EXP look. By the mid-1980s, two-seat compact sport coupes were in vogue, and the EXP found competition in the Honda CRX, Pontiac Fiero, and Toyota MR2. After four years of production, the first-generation EXP was discontinued during the 1985 model year. Originally marketed towards buyers that valued fuel efficiency over higher performance, the Ford EXP had begun to struggle against newer vehicles, especially as the build quality and refinement were inferior to its Japanese competitors. In 1985, a group of Ford assembly employees took an EXP off the line and upgraded it with parts from the updated 1985.5 Ford Escort. The one-off prototype, built by the factory workers, was presented to Ford CEO Donald Peterson, who liked it and approved it for production as a 1985.5 model. Officially renamed the Ford Escort EXP, the second-generation EXP abandoned the controversial front headlights and widely flared fenders in favour of a version of the bodywork from the standard Ford Escort, sharing its flush mount headlamps and amber turn signal lenses. The Escort EXP was given a model-specific front bumper with an integrated air dam, along with the Escort GT. The rear bodywork remained largely the same. Along with the exterior, the interior of the EXP was redesigned to match the rest of the Ford Escort line. Introduced for 1986, the Ford Escort EXP Sport Coupe was produced until 1988. It was fitted with components from the Ford Escort GT, including suspension and brake upgrades and sport bucket seats. It also got a systems monitor, with LEDs as warning indicators for headlights, taillights and fuel level. The Sport Coupe was fitted with a 106 horsepower version of the 1.9 litre CVH engine equipped with multi-point fuel injection and in 1987 the output was increased to 115 horsepower. From its 1982 introduction, sales of the EXP were never as strong as Ford had wanted. After the introduction of competitive two-seat vehicles, such as the Pontiac Fiero and Honda CRX, buyers shifted towards higher performance vehicles, and insurance rates for two-seat cars were also rising at the time. Within Ford, the development of the Ford Mustang played a separate part in the demise of the EXP. In 1982, Ford started work on the fourth generation Mustang. The goal was to make a front-wheel drive Mustang with better fuel efficiency. But the public learned of the new car and there was a big backlash, leading Ford to reconsider their decision. As the front-wheel drive car was almost ready for release, Ford chose to bring it to production as the Ford Probe. Ford couldn't afford the market overlap of producing three compact sports coupes alongside the Ford Festiva, Ford Escort and Ford Tempo two doors, so they chose to discontinue the Escort EXP, with it being such a slow seller. 
In October 1988, after making over 225,000 EXPs, the final Ford EXP rolled off the assembly line. The EXP was an interesting experiment to create a small two-door coupe, but the uninspiring performance and Econobox Escort routes meant it didn't get a strong following. A big thank you to all my patrons for supporting me. To get early advert-free access to new videos or to appear in the credits, please consider supporting me using the Patreon link below from just $1 or 80p a month and hit that subscribe button to get notified of new videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.